All right, hello and welcome to the Expert Insight Interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm joined by Dr. Steve Taubman, who is in lovely St. Louis, Missouri. How are you doing, Steve? I'm well, just just for now. It's not where I live, but uh, but I'm enjoying it for the time I'm here. Uh, Dr. Steve is, um, well, this is wonderful. He's an ex-neurotic, ex-Long Island ch chiropractor who went through personal transformation in his life, uh, overcoming uh, depression, anxiety, um, you know, low self-esteem, you know, the, the trifecta, if you like. And uh, and ever since then, you know, he's been using mindfulness um, and psychotherapy and Eastern teaching and, and hypnosis and all meditation and all these other um, techniques to help people really overcome um, such issues themselves. And so what we want to talk about today is mindset management. So how you stay on top when things are dragging you down. And I was just saying to Steve before we came on air, it just seems like today, like everybody just seems so weighed down. They're either, you know, excessively angry or, ex you know, or as we said, one step away from, you know, committing themselves to the nut house. So, um, uh, so Dr. Steve, tell me about what, what is, let's, let's right set for a moment. What do you mean by mindset management? You know, I think what most people assume is that how we feel and how we behave are directly related to the circumstances that surround us. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we are victims of our circumstances. And that's pretty much the party line. And that's why most of us are neurotic and anxiety ridden, because we haven't really uh, ever stop to think, is it possible? Is it just maybe possible <laughs> that we can enter into almost any circumstance and have the, um, the awareness, the equanimity, the uh, perseverance, the courage uh, to maintain our mindset, to maintain uh, wisdom and clarity and, and uh, uh, excellence, even when things are uh, conspiring to bring us down? And, and so that's what I mean by mindset management. Right. And and that's a that's a that's a wonderful way to start this conversation. So what you're saying is the natural the natural inclination of us as human beings, right, is to look externally, right? Is to always look at external factors around us and as you say to say um well, things aren't going my way right now because well, it's the economy. My job isn't that great. You know, my boss hates me, you know, um whatever whatever I, excuses you can come up with um so how do you reverse that to be able to sort of take a step back and say well the only common denominator in all of this is myself right yes exactly <laughs> so the first step of course is intention you've got to set the intention that i am going to be happy you know i'm going to die with a smile if it kills me <laughs> uh, and, uh, and that's that's a great place to start because most people don't even get that far uh, not to say that doing that in and of itself is going to solve your problems, but it's a great place to start because it's a stance. And if you start with a stance that I'm going to uh, master my circumstances, I'm going to maintain my calm, uh, positive centered mindset. And we're not talking here about um, about going off to live in, in, in the uh, in the mountains and stay away from people. I'm talking about what does it take to be that person when you're a CEO or when you're an entrepreneur or when you are a sales professional, how do, how do you uh, bring or, or healthcare professional is a great example. I teach a lot of healthcare professionals as well. How do you walk into the room with your patient and leave everything behind and be totally, totally focused? So, yes, first is creating the intention. Second is beginning to practice the art of focus. Mm -hmm. now, this is something that we are exceptionally bad at in our society in particular because as time has gone on, there have been more and more things to divert us, to distract us, to, uh, to, to pull us away from whatever it is that we set out to do. So we start out with the best of intentions, and then, uh, and then the phone rings, or the uh, email, or the Facebook, or whatever it is, and we become fractured. Our mind becomes fractured, and we become less effective, and we think that multitasking is going to solve it for us, when in reality, what we know from research is that the only thing you could ever do is be present in the moment now and bring all of your focus into the one thing you're doing right now and and compartmentalize. Mm -hmm. And that obviously requires a level of, of discipline and also a level of you making the choice, as you say, making the proactive choice to be in the moment because and being in the moment is, Sometimes the moment that you're in may not be the greatest moment in the world. So it's very tempting to look at, oh, there's a distraction. I'll go over here because it's a lot easier to give my attention to that than the thing that's in front of me. 
you know, we do that a lot. When I, one of my programs is called Procrastination Annihilation. <laughs> And you know, more people would have purchased it, but if they had gotten around to it. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I'm, I'm <laughs> thinking, I, I might do that, but it might take me a few yeah, weeks to get around to it. <laughs> uh, but you know, what we what we find is that um, you know, people will will say, I've got this very important thing to do, but first I'll clean out my refrigerator. <laughs> first I'll clean my nails. Uh, so as you said, you use the word discipline, and discipline is a very important word. Right? We say discipline is freedom. Mm-hmm. Most people think discipline is the opposite of freedom, but the reality is when you discipline yourself to bring your attention back, to focus your mind uh, over and over and over again until it becomes uh, your natural state, then you become free from distraction and free from discouragement and free from fear as long as you can stay present. Yeah, and I love the, I love the subject of focus, to be perfectly honest, um, is because, I mean, if we take it into a business context, this is – you see so many businesses and people in businesses like they're they're much happier when they've got 20 projects and 20 ways they can go than they are when you say, OK, we have to place a bet on one place and we're going to put all our focus in here. You know, So why, why is that as humans that we really don't like to focus? We don't like to choose. We like to keep our options open. And that that really often is a great way of of sort of a get out of jail card from doing anything, from really sort of committing to anything. Well, that's well said. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if it's 100 percent human nature as much as it's something that we've developed over time. But I think, you know, if you were to look at a small child, small kids, they can focus. You know, they could just like focus on nothing. They could stare at a beetle for an hour or, you know, just stare at a point on the wall and just zone out, keeping them, you know, keeping their mind there. What happens for us is that our lives have become so busy and our minds have become so busy that we've lost the capacity to bring our minds back again. So it's a, so it becomes uh, a, again, a discipline or it's something we need to be diligent about because ultimately it starts becoming a good thing. It starts becoming something we want to do where at first it's not something we want to do. Mm-hmm. First, we're like, I, I just want to keep my mind in motion, right? Because whatever the discomfort is that we might feel in the moment of staying focused, we think it's going to always feel that way. Right. Reality is if you stay with something and you allow yourself to move through the discomfort, then you come out the other side and you feel this amazing sense of power. But I think that's a that's a great uh, a great point that you just made there, and that is um, you have to go through the discomfort, right? And I think in in our society today, um, in, in whether it's in business or in person, I mean, I think we've gone uh, we've gone a long way to try and remove any discomfort from our lives right you know we don't discomforts about it's like work you hear nowadays like people saying you know you should this idea that you should be happy all the time in your work or whatever like i mean that's sometimes work is hard and you have to go through the pain to get the work done and to get the benefit to be happy about the results so i mean is that something that you see i mean where we're trying to take we're trying to take that discomfort out of the equation, but you can't get to the other side unless you go through it. Well, well, you can, you can just never go through it if you want, you know, you can stay right where you are and that's what most people do. But you are, as I see behind you, you're purveyors of prosperity, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, so presumably the people who are listening to this are people who also, uh, want to achieve prosperity. And, and, and I'm here to tell you that, uh, I've trained and coached very successful people, millionaires, billionaires, uh, sports figures, celebrities. And, and the work that I do is designed to help people move through to the other side because that's where prosperity lies. That's where that's where your all the goodies are. Mm-hmm. Comfort is, you know, comfort is the enemy of success. Right. So how do you when you start the when you start the process with somebody, whether it's a, a business um, or, or, you know, uh, business people or otherwise, what, what are some of the stages to getting yourself ready to make those breakthroughs? It depends on how far gone you are. Right. So <laughs> sometimes it's uh, it's just as simple as teaching somebody how to bring their mind into one point of focus for a very brief period of time. It might be I'm going to teach you to meditate for five minutes. You know, right? I'm going to teach you to uh, the next time you wash the dishes, don't do anything else other than wash the dishes. Just keep your mind focused on that. You, you know, we're all 90 pound weaklings when it comes to our focus muscles. <laughs> and so wherever we are, we need to start strengthening those muscles early on in the process. And then, you know, if if that's something that you begin to develop, the ability to quiet that internal chatter and just be present well, then we have more capacity to do the next step, which might be to reprogram all those negative thoughts. So my, my background as a hypnotist 
is that uh, that I can uh, take people through what I call a hypno coaching process. Mm -hmm. Right. So what does that mean? That means taking people first from um, from what their noisy minds to a place of silence or quiet. Secondly, to allow them to be in a in a, what we call a witness perspective to their own discomfort, their own fear, their own anxiety, whatever it is that's holding them back. Uh, and then represent that in, in sort of a um, metaphoric way. It's like, oh, all this discomfort rep is, is a is a bundle inside of me, for example. And in a hypnotic state, you can throw it away. Right? Mm. You can really do a. a uh, a, a metaphoric process or a representative process that that takes the weight off, that takes away the barriers that we feel, and then to reprogram our minds. And a lot of people do uh, affirmations, right? Mm -hmm. Good enough, I'm strong enough, and dog hunted people like me. <laughs> and, and affirmations are a um, theoretically good idea, but in practice are very difficult to uh, to succeed with. And for the for the listeners who don't know what I mean by affirmations, I mean positive self-talk, repeating yep. a statement about yourself over and over again. And the problem, of course, with that is that you have a conscious and a subconscious mind. And now when you start repeating positive things to yourself, your subconscious mind rebels against them because it's not what your subconscious mind believes. Mm -hmm. And so we use um, uh, trans induction, helping people get very quiet, get into a trance-like state so that when they say those positive things, the subconscious mind will accept them. Mm -hmm. And that's the process. So it's a, I call it unhypnosis to wake people up from the, from the programming they've been living with and to reprogram themselves in a more positive way. Yeah. And to put some of this, uh, this challenge in, in, in context, you know, I was reading recently, I think it was psychology today or something that estimated that like 68 to 70% of your daily um, thoughts or self-talk is negative. I mean, this for an average person. So these are the kind of things that you're when you when you're saying like when you're trying to reorient your mind or quiet those negative voices. I mean, it's it's tough, right? Yeah. And, and you know, another interesting statistic is that 70 percent of your day you're in a trance. Hmm. Right. So you get in the car, you drive home, you get there, you don't remember how you got there. True. Right? True. And that's and we live a lot of our lives that way. So that 70 percent of negative self-talk is probably happening during the 70 percent of the time that we're not paying attention. Right. So learning to pay attention, learning to be present to your own thoughts is a very important first step. And then so what's the what's the next step after that when you start to be able to get somebody quieted so that they can be conscious about their own thinking? Well, then it becomes a question of learning not to. Um, not to add fuel to the fire. Mm -hmm. So, so here's what typically happens. Have you ever decided, you know, I've spent a good portion of my life being an angry person. I think I'm going to stop being an angry person. And then, you know, something makes you angry mm -hmm. and then you get angry at yourself for being angry. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what we do is we, uh, in, um, in Buddhism, they call it the second arrow, which basically means, you know, if somebody shot you with an arrow, that would hurt. But if you pull the arrow out and shot yourself with it or stabbed yourself with it, yeah, that would just be stupid. <laughs> so we do. We, we essentially, we add insult to injury by observing those things we're doing and then rejecting them. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be this way. I can't believe I'm anxious. I can't believe I'm angry. No, what you wanted to learn to do is you want to learn to observe those sensations, those emotions with from a place of non-judgmental awareness or what we call equanimity. You just want to learn how to notice that your mind is going there and just observe with quiet compassion. And that's, again, another discipline. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, if you it, the, the first way you said it, if I say, "Oh, I'm going to stop being," you know, I'm not going to react um, so much to things, and then I react and I go, "Oh my God, I reacted," and then I react to that. Um, what you're saying is that you pull back to where you go, you ob you observe, and then you go, "Okay, I, I need to, you know, I need to get myself back centered again," as opposed to piling on. Yeah, it's uh, it, you know what I look at it as is I look at it as uh, there's what I call a thought loop. OK, so your thoughts create your emotions and your emotions then perpetuate the same kinds of thoughts. Right. And so if you can stop the thoughts, then the emotions would eventually dissipate. It's like throwing logs on a fire. You know, when you're angry or anguished or, mm. or insecure, you know, all of your thoughts come from that emotional place. Mm -hmm. So if you can just get into that place of the witness and, oh, I'm noticing I'm feeling these feelings. And, and, and immediately interrupt any thoughts that feed into those feelings will eventually 
those emotions will dissipate in the same way that a fire will go out if you stop throwing logs on it. So I think for for people listening, I think it's a I think this is a incredibly important messages. But I think one of the central messages here is that as we as we talked about at the beginning is like all these things outside of yourself. Yeah, the stuff going on, but there's an incredible amount of things that you actually do have complete control over yourself, right? Oh sure. Well, you know, you can control uh, your your rate of breathing. You can control where you put your focus. You can control. Um, how much you allow your thoughts to continue going down that path. And you can control the use or lack of use of your imagination, right? Mm. So your imagination could be a great tool. You can begin to imagine a better possibility, you know, if you're in a bad place, uh, or you can just keep on reimagining how bad things are. <laughs> it's all imagination. I mean, everything, unless it's happening right now, it's imagination. So you have a choice of how you use your imagination. Yeah, and unfortunately, I think nowadays, obviously, with uh, with social media, etc., is um, a lot of us are using our imagination to paint these wonderful pictures of other people's lives based on one snapshot that we saw, you know, on their Instagram feed this morning, and we go, "Oh my goodness, life must be wonderful for them," because they happen to be in a nice place with a smile on their face, and my life in comparison is awful. And so we're, we're perpetuating all of this stuff by using, you know, by focusing on these, you know, points of small snapshots in time, but filling them in to make ourselves feel bad. Yeah, we're very good at that. We're <laughs> very good at that. And, and the, the only reason we can perpetuate that is because of a lack of mindfulness, a lack mm -hmm. of self-awareness. Because the moment you wake up, the moment you say, oh, there I go again. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at me comparing myself to others. The moment that thought arises, the whole thing begins to dismantle. But the problem is you're not awake. The problem is that you're, you're having these thoughts. It's like you're living inside of that, that imaginary hell that you've created. And you never get a chance to step out of it and say, oh, what am I doing? Right? If, you're in the, if you're at the movies and the movie is scaring you, at least you say to yourself, hopefully, oh, it's just a movie. Mm hmm Right. But we tend not to do that with our lives. We tend to think we take ourselves very seriously. <laughs> so what uh, what would be what would be the one Jake, to bumping up against the end of our time? What would be the one thing that you would ask people to start doing today? If you just did if you just did one thing to start to get yourself on track, what would it be? Well, I always uh, I always say, don't believe everything you think. Right. That's my my uh, immediate caveat for everybody. So the moment you have a thought that produces negative uh, consequences inside of you, that's the moment that you have to notice the thought is happening and say, okay, this is this is a thought that's not taking me down a good path, right? So if, if I had everybody like in a room and I could get them all to do what I would hope they would do, I would teach everybody a very simple meditation technique so they could keep on bringing their mind back into the moment and not let it be running off running amok in, in negative directions. Uh, and that's probably one of the most powerful tools at our disposal is to learn something as simple as following our breath. Wow. Uh, and there's one other thing I wanted to ask you, because this is something that uh, I was been thinking a lot about recently is, you know, we always, we talk a lot about, um, you know, fear, you know, people having fear of failure, but not a lot about, not enough about people who have fear of success, right? Mm -hmm. Which is a, it's a, even more powerful in many ways. And even what you're talking about here is, um, I could see how people might almost be afraid to change because they're they're afraid of what might happen on the other side. Like you know, if it all works out and they are successful, it might have such a huge impact on their life. Maybe they have to remove negative influences from their life, you know, maybe they'll have to start over. There's a lot. So do you find that, that, that fear of what happens if everything works out for me is, is as if not more powerful? Yeah, it's a, it's a legitimate concern. You know, you may need a whole new group of friends, you know, you may, you may need a, 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 any number of things to change in your life. And, you know, we, we are comfortably numb, right? Mm -hmm. We are comfortable and, and it's terrifying to think about jumping into a new way of being. And so what we usually recommend is that not only do you do the inner work to strengthen your own mind and uh, to develop some uh, some new choices, which is really what this comes down to, but you start seeking out um, support, right? Mm -hmm. People who can be supportive of you. You may, in your, in your group of friends, you may have a few people who are great at being supportive and other ones who just kind of help pull you down, right? Mm -hmm. So 
So that's one of those areas you want to look at. And if you're going to go to, uh, you know, read a book or go to a conference or a seminar or go to a meditation retreat, um, bring people with you. Right. Don't just do it alone. I mean, if you have to do it alone, but if you can, if you can bring others along, you know, I teach seminars and I, uh, I do workshops and often what we'll do is we'll say, if you're going to come to one of our seminars, come as a team, come as a group, because if you come as a group and you come back, now you're not a square peg in a round hole, right? right. The whole, the whole thing has changed. Yeah, that's a great piece of advice. All right, uh, well, we're bumping up against the end of our time. But before we go, I wanted to give Steve a chance to tell people a little bit more about yourself and uh, and how they can get in contact with you and learn more about the, the kind of services that you offer. Oh, wonderful. Thanks. Well, you know, as you know, I've uh, written a few books. Mm -hmm. um, my, uh, you know, my message is really about how to master your mind, how to uh, reinvent your life based on the, the values and beliefs you have and how to remove stress from your life. And so uh, one of my books is called Unhypnosis, which is about waking up from the hypnotic trance we all live in and reinventing your life from a place of being awake. Uh, we've, uh, you know, it helps you set new goals that are more congruent with who you really want to be. Uh, that's one of my books. Another one, my most recent book is called Buddha in the Trenches. It's not about Buddhism, but it's about being Buddha-like, being, you know, centered and calm and peaceful on the battlefields of life. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you, you know, this is something that a lot of uh, uh, CEOs and, uh, you know, C-level executives will read because it'll help them kind of knock, you know, knock themselves down a notch from when they are getting stressed out, lower your blood pressure and get more mastery over your mind. Um, and then my program, Procrastination Annihilation, is another great program for people who, who are just aren't getting things done. Uh, all of my stuff is available on my website, uh, but you have to put something after the slash. So it's stevetaubman.com forward slash resources. It used to be right there as a button, but uh, you know, since I do a lot of keynote speaking, we don't want to make it look like a sales page. So mm -hmm. if you want to find my stuff, you have to work a little harder. stevetaubman.com forward slash resources. And uh, for your listeners, uh, I've created a uh, coupon code. Uh, so if they want to get any of my materials at a 20% discount, all they need to do when they get to the checkout page is put the word HAPPY, all in capital letters, into uh, the coupon code uh, section, and that'll knock 20% off of whatever you decide to like. Wow, that's fantastic. Uh, we really appreciate uh, that, Steve. So the coupon code HAPPY, and we'll, happy. Put, it, we'll, um, we'll put it down below here on the, on the screen as well, so you can, you can see it. Listen, uh, Steve, this has been fascinating. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your time today. Hopefully you'll come back again and we can talk some more. Well, I appreciate that. It's a fun conversation. It's one that needs to be had. Absolutely. My name is John Golden, uh, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine Pipeline of CRM. I'll see you all for another expert interview very soon. Thank you.